Hey YouTube, how you guys doing? Uh, let's go through a couple uh, things that I wrote down about uh, pre-wiring uh, either your house, um, you know, business. Take that with a grain of salt as well. But uh, some stuff about pre-wiring new additions to your house or your completely new house. So let's get to it right now. So just a couple points. None of these are in specific order except for the, the obvious here. Demarcation. Um, demarcation is where your utilities, say your 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 cable or your satellite, your internet, all that good stuff comes to the outside of the house. Like this, the actual company brings that service to the outside of your house. Um, and sometimes they'll bring it inside to a certain area. Um, from that area, that's called your demarcation point. So you have to, as the builder or as the, the people who are designing your house, have to bring all anything you want to use from that service to that point. So demarcation is exactly that. It's where you need to bring all your TV lines, everything needs to come to that location or you need to run something from that location to wherever you want to put your main area. Um, you, this includes satellite, television, everything like that. So you gotta think about if, you're, if you have AT&T, Comcast for internet, or if you're using satellite internet, where um, that satellite's going to be and where you want to. Sometimes um, we can run lines uh, to that location on a roof. I can set up actually having the satellite company or the Comcast or whoever run lines around your house, wrap your house because of where their service is coming from. We can run a line inside your house to that point or to a location on the roof or outside where you want the satellite dish. That way they're not actually running ugly black or white cabling around your brand new house or to your house to get to that location. So something to keep in mind. Um, you're gonna hear me say Cat 6 a lot. <laughs> Category 6 cabling is kind of a wonder cable. They, a wee, not a cable, but I guess it's a wire, whatever you wanna call it. But uh, we can do many, many things with it. So you're gonna want a lot of Cat6 line or whoever you're employing to do is gonna be using, supplying a lot of Cat6 line. Um, so that's your demarcation. There's a lot more to going into it. You can ask your, whoever you're, who's uh, responsible for the low voltage, low voltage or your wiring, where you're gonna put the, you know, your main area for your control center, whether it's like behind a the theater, in a closet, in basement. Um, would not recommend attic because of the heat or the cool of uh, the cold. Um, network. Next would be your network. So are you going to, if you're looking into wireless networks, I'm just letting you know, you know, it's, it's convenient. Wireless is convenient, but wired is always preferred because it's going to be faster. As of right now, it's faster. Um, and you're going to either have wireless as far as your signal. So if your house is built out of concrete, you're going to want cell boosters inside for, you know, if you're, you're not getting good reception and WAP wireless access points. So you're going to get a router from your either your cable provider. You can provide one yourself, and from there, if your house is large, that's not going to cover your entire house. So you're going to run Cat Six to certain locations for wireless access points that actually beam out wireless signal for your network. That way, your entire house can be covered. So you want to, you know, pinpoint spots, get with your person. They're going to, depending on how your house is set up, um, that's going to basically cover up your entire house. That way, you have no dead spots. You're not going to go to your basement and have you know one bar for your Wi-Fi signal or your upstairs or to a corner wing of your house. So everything can be covered via wireless access points. Video distribution. I'm going to say I'm going to go over. Each, I'm just going to be another video for each one of these to kind of go into depth. This is not in depth. This is just what you're looking at pre-wiring your house for or wiring your house for. It's already existing. Video distribution basically meaning how you want to watch your television, um, your TV basically, um, anything like that. Theaters, obviously you can see the next one down, but um, as a rule of thumb, depending on what you're gonna do, you run four cat sixes and a coax to each location wherever you want to. Wire is cheap when you don't have walls up, it's just bare, not like this, but when it's bare, you're building your house, building a room, building a, you know, a spot, Wire is really cheap to run because it's very easy. Um, I don't have to fish lines down walls that are, there's no wall there. If it's just studs, then it's extremely easy. You, the labor is two, three times less, sometimes even more. I mean, it could be a lot more. You're charging, you know, $1,500 to one, run one line, depending on what kind of drywall I got to rip out. But it's very cheap to run wire uh, when there's no drywall, when it's unfinished. So just run it, just run your lines. If you don't know you're gonna need something, but you may, just run the line. It's there, it, the hard work's done once it's drywalled up. You literally have to, you know, punch a hole, grab the wire, and then find it on the other end, tone it out, and you're good. So video distribution, cat six, four cat six, and one, you know, quad shield, solid copper, RG6, 
to that location. It's going to cover pretty much everything. Y4, CAT6, um, you want some sort of control for your TV, whether it's um, IP or IR control. So if you want to control it through a regular remote, um, your phone, uh, a universal remote, can, like a control four system, um, the CAT6 is going to do that for you. And then you're going to have two CAT6 for HDMI. Um, so you can get HDMI coax off the CAT6. Like I said, CAT6 is going to be what you're going to hear a lot in these video series. Um, and then another CAT6 just either for, as for a backup, um, you know, you know, anything else you're going to want to use it for. I mean, we can get, you know, audio, video, whatever you want to off the CAT6 and redundancy. That way you have enough. You may get it where you're only going to need that, that RG6 because you're going to run that, you know, direct TV signal to that TV and then you have a receiver behind the TV. Fine, you don't need those, you don't need those other, you know, CAT6s, but they're there if you do or they're there if you ever want to upgrade your system. Like I said, if you're building your house, extremely easy, pretty cheap just to run in lines and then drive all everything else up. Theater, surround sound for your house, that's going to be a completely, a completely serious as far as theaters. You guys can look up however you want to on theaters. Um, you know, you're going to need 14.2, uh, 14.4, 16.4, you know, your, your speakers, um, your wiring, um, subs, just you're going to have to plan it out and run, you know, obviously your theater. You, I will not recommend running conduit to every TE location in case you need to pull HDMI over long distances. You, you know, it's, it's not, you, you can just pull a redundant HDMI to certain spots, but for like, say, a theater where um, you're, you're putting in fiber optics, and um, uh, you know other things where you're not going to want to tear out anything out. You know, run a conduit to your uh, projector location that way because HDMI is either go bad or they upgrade it. You know, you, we had HDMI and now we have HDMI 2.0 or 1.2. You know, you can always upgrade those HDMI's, run conduits that way you can pull another HDMI um, fiber. I know I didn't say fiber in the video distribution, but if you know. And my next house will run fiber to locations because it's you know it's going to be the future as far as getting high speed anything. Um, we in my area, you know, we don't have gigabit speed internet, so there's you know really no reason. But if you're working pre-wiring for a business, anything like that, fiber is definitely an option. And same thing with your TV, your theater, running fiber to the projector, running fiber to other locations for anything is always it's going to be expensive, but it's always something you have to think about if you're already building it. Um, you might as well put it in, really. Um, touch screens um, for your, I, you know, this goes into whatever you're going to use them for. Video monitoring, you know, um, intercoms down here, but, you know, intercom, whatever you need to, but touch screens for whatever you're going to need, um, garages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you're going to want a CAT6 for that location for any touch screen you want upstairs, you know, probably, um, you know, one per level at least, and you can go from there. Um, again, CAT6. Surveillance, security cameras, um, it's always good to run. If you're running, most most people who get security cameras installed, you know, wish they would be, they'll see the blind spots. Once you fire everything up, you're gonna see the blind spots and you're like, oh, I should put another camera there or, you know, to cover another blind spot. So in a corner of a house, corner of a building, if we're, you know, if, if we're contracted to run, you know, one location, you know, one camera, we usually pull two just because it's gonna save us, it's gonna save the customer. Um, we're saving ourselves from the work and they're eventually going to say, okay, I want another camera there for a blind spot, etc., etc. But we always recommend it anyway. But if you're going to run for one camera, might as well run for two. Um, but the labor is already going to be paid for through uh, running that line itself. So, and then sensors. Uh, most, you know, window sensors, you know, sensors are going to be wireless nowadays. But um, if you prefer wired, then you wire for um, your, your sensors as well. Plus, plus, you know, large windows, stuff like that. Um, you know, window shades, but in the same time you do the window shade wiring, you do the uh, window sensor as well. Um, miscellaneous for the last, that's going to be pretty much everything else, really. I mean, if you wanted, you know, ambient lighting, if you wanted crazy LED somewhere, um, video anything, if you wanted, you know, video wall mirroring, um, window shades, like I said, for um, most window shades are going to be wireless as well. They got batteries that last a very long time, but say if there's like a, a window that's really high up, you don't want to get a big ladder out or contract somebody to bring a ladder or a small lift, depending on how big your house is, to get to that window shade. Just wire it up and you never have to worry about it really. Um, and then, you know, intercoms, it, you know, most people, I don't do many intercoms, um, cell phones. <laughs> so, uh, but intercoms as well, you know, it's, just put the wire in, you know, speakers, put the wire in. Um, 
just you know it's gonna be there for you um, and you're it's, it's gonna if you don't ever use it great but if you do then it's gonna save you lots and lots of time headache and drywall and money already having a line there period so and I will go back I think I skipped surround sound um, speakers in the entire house obviously um, the theater is gonna have a surround sound um, you know you have multiple rooms if you want to you can wire up as many as you want to um, but speakers in a house you know two speakers one speaker run your speaker cable straight we'll get into that later what kind of speaker cable you should run resistance and all that kind of stuff just run your speaker cable um, if you think you're gonna need a, uh, a speaker in this room just you know run it you know this is zigzag so we can get to it and then they'll drywall it up we know it's there doesn't matter we'll cut a little hole for our speaker you know you know search around grab it yank it we're, we're good so um, that way if you may not think oh I don't need speaker you know if I'm not ever gonna put a speaker in here just run it's so cheap it really is so cheap just run it anyway and then if you you know if the wipe down road is like oh, I want to be able to listen to something or, you know once you know then you have it you saved yourself could be thousands of dollars really so all right guys that's it for this this is this is kind of an overview of what we're gonna be talking about but a quick quick rundown of what you to look at if you're building a brand new house and you're thinking about low voltage wiring um, again as far as budget wise um, you know, people say between one and five percent of your house budget for your low voltage. It can go lower or it can go higher depending. Again, theaters can be crazy expensive. Um, you can get crazy, you know, big TVs. All like, you know, it just depends on what you want as far as budget. But make sure you, you know, you tackle with your AV guy. All of this was included. If you're, you may not even want security cameras. You may not, you know, you don't care about, um, you know, pads or anything as far as uh, touch screens. Uh, this. It's it, everything here. You can never, you may never want in theater. <laughs> so just take it for a grain of salt. But this is what to look for, guys. Like and subscribe. Thank you.